Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First, I want to give a praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakar Kadash, and double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who are leading this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. And salutations to all the Hebrew Israelite brothers out there that are teaching this word in the name of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai and in truth and in spirit and in sincerity and according to biblical scripture not according to your emotions or your feelings according to biblical scripture and prophecy so today we're going to talk about our numero uno enemy Esau so let me take you back a little in a history that is an old Jamaican song where it says let me take you back a little in a history right by Pupa San right he was a famous DJ of Jamaica and he had a song and he was talking about all of the DJs of the past in Jamaica all had died and passed away so his song was called let me take you back a little in our history so this is what we're going to do about Esau we're going to take you back a little in history a little back into history about Esau and then we're going to bring you up to the present day about Esau to give you once again a bit more understanding because we've got to keep on this man we've got to keep on Esau we've got to keep on because ultimately the scriptures is about two nations that are going to come head to head the israelites and the edomites all right the israelites as we know are those of us that descend from the transatlantic slave trade all right and we speak about our people all the time those of our ancestors we are the ancestors of, of the slave trade all right those you know call themselves west indians caribbeans and those of you that call yourself african americans you know haitian so forth and also as we know the Israelites are also the ten the 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 Native American Indian tribes of North South America and Canada today who they call Latinos Hispanics Mexicans and Puerto Ricans right those are the true Israelites of the Bible those are the true children of God and as we've all and as I always tell you that Israel is also scattered and mixed amongst the other nations all right they're also scattered and mixed amongst the other nations so we're gonna go back a little bit in the history talk about the Israelites and we know who the Edomites, we know who the Edomites are. Well, let's do this. It's a bit, getting a bit windy up here today. Do that, put that there. That was probably that. We're also going to talk about the Edomites, right? Who are the Edomites, right? Which we know are the so called Caucasians, so called Europeans, you know, so called white men. Those are the Edomites. So we're going to go up a little bit here. We're going to talk, we're going to talk about Esau from his beginning, all right? And when we say from his beginning, when he came as Esau, all right? Because we know Esau had the same spirit as Cain, all right? So don't get it twisted. But this is when Esau came as Esau, the progenitor of the so-called Europeans, the so-called white man, so-called Caucasians, right? They have different names today, but they are Edomites. It's like how they gave us different names today, but we are the Israelites, right? We are the children of Israel, the true children of Israel. So, I'm going to read something out of the Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, all right? So this is what we're reading out of here. It's called Zondervan's, you can see, Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, right? So we're going to read that extract here, speaking on Esau, right? Because it's going to go into the history of Esau. Right, and it's, it's, it breaks it down quite well, tell you who this man is, but let's just go into it and so you can understand. So it says here, Esau is the firstborn twin brothers, right? Esau and Jacob were the sons of Isaac and Rebekah, as we know, right? Before their birth, the Mosai had told their mother that the elder should serve the younger. So, how do we know that? We know that through Bible prophecy, through the scriptures. So if we go into the scriptures, Go into the scriptures, all right, to Genesis chapter 25, verse 20. All right, so let's just read out that prophecy that they spoke of here. It says, And Isaac was 40 years old, all right, so in the book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian, of Pandaram, the sister of Laban, all right, the Syrian, all right. So when it says the Syrian, they lived in that land, Syria. They weren't actual Syrians, but they lived in that land, right? And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Right? 
and she went to inquire of the Lord, Yahweh. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations, right? This is the key point here. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people, right, shall be separated from the bowels. So who are those two nations? Who are those two manners of people? One of them is an Edomite, the other one's an Israelite, right? One is the so-called Caucasian, so-called white man. The other ones are the so-called, you know, West Indians, Caribbeans, Native American Indian tribes, right? Latinas, Hispanics, and Puerto Ricans, right? Those were the two nations that was in her, in her womb, the Israelites and the Edomites, right? So she said, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from the bowels. This is why we are so different to Esau in every aspect of our life, right? From how we eat our foods, from what we do in our day-to-day -day social life, you know, the Israelites are born with pure rhythm, right? Whether it's in music, in sports, we just move with a certain rhythm, we have a certain spirit, you see it. Whether it's in sports, the music industry, whether we're in the movie industry, you know, in films, you know, whether we're comedians on stage, celebrities, you know, just see the interaction of the so-called Israelites walking the streets today and the so-called Edomites. You see that you can see that they're two different nations of people, right? Whereas the you know the foods that we eat as well, you know, we our foods are seasoned and flavoured and so forth. Whereas the Edomites, the only time they get to taste seasoned food is when they come and eat amongst Israelites. All right, or people of other nations, all right? There is no rhythm in these people. As you can see, if you see an Edomite that got rhythm, it's because he may look like an Edomite, but he's not an Edomite. He'll either go back to Israel or another nation, but they have no rhythm. They have no, there, there is no, thing, you know, these people can't sing, they can't dance, right? In sports, they're the worst sportsmen. And I said to you, if you see an Edomite that's good at sports, singing or dancing, it's because he's, probably a more likely an Israelite or he's of another nation right but he's more likely an Israelite so you're not going to see that so they have no you can see the foods that we eat they eat, they like to eat their meat raw with blood in it and so forth whereas Israelites do not eat their food raw blood whatever's inside their food they don't eat their food like that but they do so they are as you can see we have the traits of our people are completely different right the Edomites like hunting and killing animals for sports. We don't. That's not in our nature. That's not in our spirit. Right? The, 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 sorry, I mean, the, the Edomites like eating, uh, like uh, hunting and killing animals for sports. Not the Israelites. The Edomites like to do that. Right? Whereas the Israelites don't. It's not in our nature to do that. Right? The Edomites are warmongers. The Israelites are not. But what, what the, I keep, Get it confused there. The Edomites are warmongers and the Israelites are not. Let me correct myself. But you can see in this world that these Edomites have created, and they want everybody to become like them in their ways, right? The Edomites are, are godless people. They don't truly believe in God because if they did, they would know that there's an almighty judgment that's coming down on the house of Edom. But they will never accept that because they don't truly believe in the God of the Bible. They believe in this white idea of white Jesus so forth you know so there's so many different things that I could point I could, I could go on all day and give you a list of things that show you that we were separated from the womb in in the spirit our spirit is different to these Edomites right the, the Israelites the so-called Negroes West Indians Caribbeans Latinos Hispanics Mexicans Puerto Ricans our spirit is different to this so-called white man to these Europeans right completely different spirit in every way in what we do and say so the scripture says here genesis 25 verse 23 and the lord said unto her two nations are in thy wounds right and two manner of people shall be separated from the bowels and the one shall be stronger than the other people and the elder and that's another thing we are naturally stronger than them in any sport we enter into any games you know whether it's athletics you know they'll, they'll never beat us in a race they'll never beat us in a boxing match they never beat us, you know, any sports that they give us a fair playing field to go into, we will always supersede and overtake this man, right, and dominate that sport forever, all right? And a perfect example was basketball. That was an all-white sports, or NFL, right? But now it's dominated by Israelites. Baseball's the same thing, dominated by Israelites. Tennis, dominated by Israelites. Whatever sports we enter into fairly and you put a few Israelites into it, we'll take over that whole sport. So that's just another example. Yeah.
So the little interval break there, family, just so you understand, the video just cut off slightly there. Um, same thing happened yesterday, ran out of storage. And by the way, today is May the 31st, 2021. May the 31st, Monday, May the 31st, 2021. So it was kind of cut off in midstream there. So let's just carry on. So the scripture says, Genesis 25 and 23, and the Lord said unto her, two nations, are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated right from the bowels and the one people right shall be what shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled there were twins all right so we're in genesis 25 verse 24 so it says and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled behold there were twins in her womb right which are jacob and esau and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment and they called his name esau so as we all know when an edomite baby when a caucasian baby is born he is red because his blood is showing through his veins in his skin and he doesn't have any melanin in his skin all right so we know that for a fact all right so the baby that came out red was a Caucasian baby because Edomites are different shades of red. Caucasians, so-called white men, are different shades of red. They are not white, right? They are different shades of red. Just like how we are not black, we are different shades of brown, right? So it says, in this, it says, and after that came his brother out and his hand took hold of Esau's hill and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she, when she bear them so jacob the name jacob means a supplant all right to be supplanted all right so that was jacob that came out after so let's go back to what we was reading right so it says here esau became a man of the fields right esau became a man of the field as as, as, as we know he apparently lived only for the present just like today it's in their blood they only live for the present all right it's all about now 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 right for them right what they want now it's all about that basically it's only living for the present all right so it's, it's only living for the present it's all about now 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 for them right so nothing has changed in who this man is right who edom is so he says here Esau became a man of the film, he apparently lived only for the present. This characteristic was demonstrated when he let Jacob have his birthright for a mess of pottage because he was hungry. So where do we find that? We find that in Genesis chapter 25 verse 30, all right? So we go to Genesis chapter 25 verse 30 and that's where we find that, all right? Where it says here, it says, uh, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee. Let's go back, let's go to verse 29. It says, and Jacob sod pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. All right? And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee. All right? Let me go to verse 27. <laughs> Might as well. It's pointless starting at verse 30. It's only a few verses down. So Genesis 25, verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. As we know, this man, that's what he does. He he hunts. He hunts for sport, animals for sport, right? He hunts them to eat, but he mainly hunts them for sport, for trophies, right? So he's, he's a cunning, he was a cunning hunter back then, and these Edomites are cunning hunters today, whether they're hunting animals or they're hunting people and other nations to conquer their lands. He was a cunning hunter then, and he's no different today. He's a cunning man today, these Edomites. So it says here, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, right? A man of the field and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison but Rebekah loved Jacob right and Jacob's sod pottage and Esau came from the field and he was what he was faint right and Esau said to Jacob and Jacob's sod pottage right because he was faint and Esau said to Jacob feed me I pray thee that the same red pottage for I am faint therefore was his name called Edom so what does the name Edom mean the name Edom means red because when you're faint when a so-called white man is faint or tired he goes red in his he, the, the fullness of his redness comes out 
in his cheeks, in his forehead, in his arms, in his legs. It's all over when he's faint, when he's hot, when he's cold. That's when you see the fullness of this man's red. When the sun hits him, it's even worse. And remember, there was no such thing as suntan lotion back then. The only reason why an Edomite can get shades of brown today under the sun is because of suntan lotion, right? Which is a, a 20th century phenomenon. Before that, when the sun hits them, they go even redder, all right? Because the word Edom means red. And I said before, these Europeans, so-called white men, they are different shades of red. So it says here, it says, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And if we look that, that word up, Edom, we're going to go back to that later anyway, in the Hebrew. Let's just quickly look it up. While we're here, uh, the word Edom, so we can bring it up for education sites, so and they call his name Edom, Edom, as it says here. Zonovan's Bible Dictionary, as you can see, it says red. Can you see that? Turn it upside down. Oops. You see that? Red. See? Edom means, you can see that? Red. Turn it backwards, front way so you can see it, right? Because this man is different shades of red. So anyway, so let's go back to what we was reading. Let's go back to now, back to Esau. So it says here, the character, it says, uh, the characteristics, the, this characteristic was demonstrated when he let Jacob have his birthright for a mess of pottage because he was hungry. So we was reading here, and Jacob's and Esau said to Jacob, "Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage." Genesis chapter twenty-five, verse thirty. With the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, "Sell me this day thy birthright." And Esau said, "Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me?" So that's how. Jacob was able to supplant Esau for his birthright, right? As I was able to supplant him for his birthright. So Jacob said to him, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? But this was always meant to be. This is this, so you understand. Jacob supplying Esau for this birthright was prophecy. Had to happen. That was always going to happen. Jacob Esau was always going to sell his birthright to Jacob because that's how the Most High prophesied this thing to happen. All right, so it says, And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, right? And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So this was always meant to be, right? Esau selling Jacob his birthright. And we know that also through the book of Romans, right? And we'll just quickly read out that precept there while we're here. For edification's sake, because I know most of you brothers and sisters know this, but we do this to edify the flock and to keep you fresh on what's going on. Uh, Romans chapter nine, we're gonna go to Romans chapter 9 verse 9 all right it says for this is the word of the promise at this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son and not only this but when Rebecca also had conceived by one even by our father Isaac correct right? for the children listen carefully being not yet born neither having done any good or evil 
that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So it was, this was prophecy. This was, this is how it was meant to happen, right? The, the children being born, not yet done any good or evil, just like Paul saying here in Romans, right? It says, Romans 9, chapter 11, sorry, Romans chapter 9, verse 11, it says, for the children, Jacob and Esau, being not yet born in the mother's womb, in Rebecca's womb, right? Neither having done any good or evil, right? That the purpose of the Most High, right? According to the election, who was going to be considered the elect, might stand not of works, but they ain't been born yet, they haven't done anything on the earth yet, they haven't come out of their mother's womb yet, haven't drawn any breath in the air yet, they've stood in their mother's womb. So it was not because of works, but of him that calleth. Who's the him? Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. But we're directly talking that Yahweh. He said, This is how it's going to be. Those people that are going to come from Jacob are going to be my chosen, my promise, right? My covenant. And those that came from Esau were going to be the seed of the wicked. So there was nothing that they had done yet. I have a child to have caused the most high to say, Oh, you behave good, you behave bad. It was already decided from the beginning that one set of people were going to be born to be the righteous. The elect, the chosen, the promise that we're going to receive the covenant, and the other we're going to see the wicked, the bad. All right. So it says here, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved. Where's that written? That's written in the book of uh, Malachi one and four. But Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid. For he says unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have co compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, right? Nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that show his mercy. So he decides which nation is going to serve him, who he's going to show mercy to, or which nation is not going to serve him, who's going to be the wicked, who's going to be his sword on this earth. And that's what it was decided before they were born that Jacob was going to be his righteous, his chosen, the promise, the covenant, right? He was going to receive the, um, he was going to receive the, the, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of the Most High and the promises, right? That's what Jacob was going to receive. Esau was going to receive the sword. That was going to be his blessing. So this is how we know once again today who the Edomites are today. Because Esau, Edom, are the people that control the world, that have the, the greatest military might in the world, that went to the four corners of the world and murdered, pillaged, raped and killed to create their empire today, right? Which we know as Amer American imperialism, right? Which comes from the British Empire, you know, and parts of the French Empire back then and the Spanish Empire. The American imperialism has taken over the whole thing. That's Edom's stronghold, right? So that's how we know once again. So let's go back to scripture. Go back to what he was reading. Well, we just, uh, get a bit blown out here today, but we're going to go back there. So it says here, at, at the age of 40, he married two Hittite women. So that's what he did, right? He married two Hittite women at the age of 40 Esau, right? Because he was trying to vex his father, all right? Because he didn't get the blessing, right? When the time came for Isaac to give his blessing to his son, he wanted to confer he wanted to confer it, it not Esau, but through trickery, through trickery, well, he supplanted his father, right? Jacob, and but through trickery, Jacob attained the blessing instead. So even though Jacob supplanted his father, that it was ordained to be that way. He was always going to get the blessing, as we read in, in the book of um, Romans, that it was always set to be that way, all right? So Esau selling his birthright to his brother, Jacob, believe because Jacob's name means a supplant, that's what Jacob's name means, a supplant, right? It was always meant to be, because the most high ordained it like that. We just read that in Romans chapter nine, all right? So, it says there, the loss grieved Esau very much, right? So him losing his birthright, it grieved him. It grieved Esau very much, right? The loss grieved Esau very much. He begged for another blessing, 
and when he received it he hated it because it made the him it because it made him the servant of his brother right he hated jacob for cheating him and intended to kill him so esau's blessing was the sword remember right so he hated jacob for that because he didn't get the blessing of the promise and also it, the, the blessing was that his brother was going to rule over him it says there the loss grieved Esau very much. He begged for another blessing. And when he received it, he hated it because it made him the servant of his brother. So there was one time in history when these, all of these Edomites were under this, the, the, the suppression of the Israelites. That was under the reign of King David and his son Solomon. That's the only time in history that we know of that we have written down in the Bible that tells us, or even in the secular world, where the Edomites as a nation of people were under the thumb of Jacob, right? The Israelites. So that was a period of roughly 80 years. David was on the throne for 40 years. Solomon was on the throne for 40 years. So that was only one period of time. So this actual time where Esau is going to become the servant of Jacob forever, for eternity, hasn't come yet. That's part of the, that's part of the prophecies. That's part of the prophecies to come. All right? That's part of the end time prophecies where these Edomites are going to be subjected under the Israelites. But if we go back to, if we go back to, let's go to Genesis 27. If we go back to Genesis 27. And we just quickly talk about the blessing. Genesis 27 verse 38, right? Verse 37, it says, And Isaac, so in the book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 37, And Isaac answered, right? And said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do unto thee, my son? Right? So it says, and Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, right? Behold, thy dwellings shall be the fatness of the earth, the riches of the earth, and of the dew of the heaven from above. All right? This man controls the whole things. And by the sword, by his military might, which we see today, right? with his, all his military capabilities and by the sword thou shalt live and shall serve thy brother and he's going to serve thy brother so at some point this Edomites is going to serve his brother and that's when the that's when the Lord comes into the picture right to deliver the children of Israel that's when these Edomites are going to serve their brother right? that's when Esau is going to serve his brother Jacob that's when all of the descendants of Esau are going to serve the descendants of Jacob right when the Lord comes and the second coming of the Lord right so it says, and by the sword shalt thou live, which is what he, as you see today, everything he's got, he holds, he controls. He's, this man has taken everything that he has by the sword. He has used the sword to control the flows of the markets, the land, the sea, the air, the whole bishmerang. Right? Because that's what his blessing was. His blessing was the sword. Right? And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. Right? which is what he has, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob. See, this is where he hated him. Because of the blessings whereas his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand, and then will I slay my brother Jacob. So this is why they have that hatred between the two nations. It's the scriptures are about, these are the two main nations that the scriptures are talking about. Jacob and Esau, the Edomites, and the Israelites. Those are the two main ones. The ones the um, pro protagonists, and the other ones the antagonists. All right. So those are the two main nations that it's going to come down to between Edom and Jacob, between Esau and Jacob, and their descendants today. So that's the blessing that he got, and he knew that at some point he's going to have to serve his brother. So that time is coming. That's when the Lord is going to come to deliver the true children of Israel. When the Lord comes to gather the Israelites from the four corners of the world, when we're in the war of Armageddon, right? When World War III kicks off, the war of Armageddon happens, 
the deliverance of the Israelites, the elect, that's the time that Esau is going to be taken down. And from that point onwards, he's always going to be a servant of his brother for a thousand years, remember. He's going to serve his brother before he's totally destroyed as a nation to no longer exist on the planet Earth. What happens to his spirits when they go back to heaven? It's for the most high to decide what he's going to do with them. But as a nation of people on the planet Earth, they're going to serve Jacob, the Israelites, for a thousand years. That's when the Bible talks about the thousand years that you get to that we reign with Yahweh Shai. That's the thousand years that we're going to have this man in captivity. Because as we read yesterday, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of faith of the saints. All right? So, got this part here. So let's go back again. So it says here. So, so we read here, he begged for another blessing and when he received it, he hated it because it made him the servant of his brother, which we just read. He hated Jacob for cheating him and intended to kill him. When Esau saw Jacob sent away to obtain a wife from his mother's relatives, he understood that the Canaanite wives did not please his father. So he went out and took for himself two additional wives of the Ishmaelites, because that's what he did. First, he, 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 The first two wives he married were Canaanite wives. But remember, he, he, this, this, was, this man here was the only Caucasian looking person during that time. There was no other Caucasian floating about in Mesopotamia, right? In the Fertile Crescent, only Esau. So he takes two Canaanite wives because the Canaanites are Hamites, they're dark skinned, very dark skinned people because he wants to try and bring back color into his children by taking them as his wife. Then he took two Ishmaelite wives, right? Which were another nation of so-called black people, right? Took wives from them that were, they were more brown in skin than then you know the Hamites were very dark the Ishmaelites were more brown in skin so he took two of their wives because the Canaanite wives did not please his father all right so he says here when he saw saw Jacob sent away to obtain a wife from his mother's relative he understood that the Canaanite wives did not please his father so he went out and took himself two additional wives of the Ishmaelites all right so the two additional wives of the Ishmaelites are in we can go to Genesis 28 and 6 right and we're going to bring it up so Genesis 28, where is it? Twenty-eight verse where is it? So the two Canaanite wives he took was at the beginning of Genesis 28, and it mentions that. It says, and Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise and go to P Pandanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And the Most High Almighty blessed thee and made thee fruitful and multiplied thee, and thou, that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessings of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which the most i gave unto abraham and isaac sent away jacob and went to pandanaram unto laban the son of bethuel the syrian the brother of rebecca jacob and esau's mother all right then it says when esau when esau saw that isaac had blessed jacob and sent him away to pandanaram to take him a wife from thence that was his blessed that he gave him a charge saying thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan so Esau knew that so he knew that that displeased his father what we just read right and Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Pandanaram and Esau seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father right verse 8 verse 9 Genesis 28 verse 9 then went Esau unto Ishmael and took the wives and took unto the wives which he had Mathala, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nabajoth to be his wife, right? So this is what he took. He took the daughter of Ishmael, which is Abraham's son, so his uncle. So Ishmael is Esau's uncle, right? Because that's Isaac's brother. And he took his wife, his daughter to be his wife, right? To Ishmaelites, because he realized that the Canaanites that he took didn't please his father. All right, so he went and took two Ishmaelite wives because they remember Ishmael 
also descends from Shem. The Canaanites descend from Ham. So it was a no-no for him to have gone to Ham to take any of their descendants as wives. So Ishmael's wives, Ishmael's daughters were more acceptable to Isaac because they came from the line of Shem. So that's where he went. So he went all the way to Ishmael and took two of his wives to be his wives. All right. So let's continue reading what it says about him. So we go back here. It says, when Esau saw Jacob sent away to obtain a wife from his mother's relative, he understood that the Canaanite wife did not please his father. So he went out and took himself two additional wives of the Ishmaelites. And we just read that in Genesis 28 verse 6. It says, years later, right? Years later, when he was living in Mount Seir, because that's, that's the original habitation. Mount Seir is the original habitation of the Edomites, all right? I've always said to you that these people are the original cavemen, right? We never lived in caves, but Edomites did. Europeans lived in caves. That was the original habitat. That's why they, they love to build skyscrapers and high rises and concrete buildings, because it reminds them in their spirit of their homeland, their natural homeland, which are the caves and the rocks of the mountains. All right, so it says years later when he was living in Mount Seir, Esau heard and the original inhabitants of Mount Seir were the Hittites, right? It says Esau heard that Jacob was returning to Canaan. With 400 men, he set out to meet his brother, but the provisions Jacob made to placate him caused him to greet his brother warmly. They soon parted company and Esau went back to Mount Seir. Well, that's, that's when Esau told Jacob that he can't cross through his he, he didn't want him to cross through his land right no that was Moses sorry when Esau that, that, that was the Edomites that told the Israelites that when Moses was was walking through the wilderness, wilderness of sin and he wanted to pass through the king's highway and he said no he's got to go through Kadesh and around Mount Saw or Mount Hor to go that's the Edomites didn't let them back that was a different time this is talking about the time when Jacob actually met his brother and, but Esau came down with 400 men and Jacob was scared. So he sent like a, a greeting party ahead of him to make sure Esau was in the right spirit, just in case. So Esau heard that Jacob was returned to Canaan, right? So that was, you quickly read that, that's Genesis 32. Verse three, it says, and Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, all right? his brother unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom, right? But it was also known as Edom, the country of Seir, Mount Seir. And he commanded them saying, thus shall you speak unto my Lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob says, thus I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. So that's after he left Laban, his uncle, and took his wife. He, he, he sojourned there for I think 14 years, seven years for Rebecca and seven years for Leah, right? For Rachel, sorry, and seven years for Leah. So if we jump down to verse nine, it says, and Jacob said, O power of my father Abraham and the power of my father Isaac, the Lord which say this to me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred. I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and all the truths which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff, I pass over this Jordan and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, right? He will come and smite me and the mother with the children, right? And the mothers with the children. And thou sayest, I will surely do, do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for the multitude. So Jacob was praying to the most to say, look, I'm gonna confront my brother Esau now. He's coming down with all these men, spare me from him. So this is what it says there, with 400 men he set out to meet his brother, but the provisions Jacob made to placate him caused him to greet his brother warmly because Jacob had provisions and bought sheep and lamb. Because remember, Jacob was a wealthy man. He had loads of stock, you know, animals and in his stock that he was traveling with, that he, he that he was able to take when he left Laban, right? His uncle, his uncle's um, farm and land when he left them, when he left Laban and took his two wives, um, Rachel and Leah, and the two handmaids, Zilpah and Bila, right? who eventually went on to be the mothers of the 12 sons, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. So it says the way, it says, they soon parted company and Esau went back to Mount Seir. In the providence of the Most High, Esau was made subservient to Jacob, right? As we read, in the providence of the Most High, Esau was made subservient to Jacob, right? In Hebrews, 
right? Sorry. It says he is described. Yeah, in the book of Hebrews, he is described as, prof as a profane person. So we know that, all right? When it talks about, this is what I said to you, this man, this man can never receive any blessings. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us how this man, book of Hebrews chapter 12, let's just quickly put it out. Hebrews 12. Where are you? Hebrews 12, verse 16 and 17, right? It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. That's what he did. He sold his birthright for one morsel piece of meat, right? For you know how that afterward, when he when he would have inherited the blessing, he was what? He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. This is why I tell you again, this man cannot receive salvation, repentance. He can't. He sold his birthright. I mean, no other nation can receive salvation but the Israelites. But we're talking about the Edomites in particular. They can't. So even though he sought it carefully with tears with his father, asking for a different kind of blessing, the promise. He wanted the promise. He wanted the covenant. He wanted Jacob to serve him. It was never going to happen because it was ordained to be like that in the first place. And that's, and that's the, the moral of that story. That was never going to change. So it says here, it says, in Hebrews, which, which we just read, he is described as profane person. Long after his death, the Lord declared he loved Jacob and hated Esau. All right, so that's in Malachi chapter one, two and three. Paul refers to that in Romans chapter nine, but that's actually in Malachi. If we read the book of Malachi, So these are the things that Christians can't understand. When the Most High says he hates someone, boy. <laughs> Oops, it's up here somewhere. One second. That's Micah. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. So in Malachi, it says there the burden of the word for malachi chapter 1 verse 1 the burden of the word of the lord to israel by malachi all right i have loved you says the lord yahweh yet ye say wherein hast thou loved us was not esau jacob's brother all right says the lord yahweh yet i loved jacob and i hated esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness so that's shown you quite clearly once again that's what paul was referring to when he wrote in romans jacob have i loved esau have i hated when he referred to that in romans chapter 9 i think it was verse 11 or 12 that's what he's referring to all right just so you understand so in here when it says um long after his death Right, long after Esau's death, the Lord declared he had loved Jacob and hated Esau. Right, we just read that in Malachi chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. It says the Apostle Paul used this passage, which I just mentioned, right, <laughs> to illustrate how God carries out his purpose, which is what we just read earlier in Romans 9, chapter 10 to 13. Sometimes in scripture, Esau is used as the name of the land of Edom, right, in which his descendants lived. So those descendants are here today, masquerading around, calling themselves Caucasians, calling themselves so-called white people or Europeans, you know, all these different nationalities against them. But those are the descendants of Esau. You see, what fears the elites, because the elites know, but the average John Doe doesn't know, but the elites of these people know what the end times of Esau is going to be, how it's all going to go down for these Edomites. The elites actually know. This is why they're preparing all of their space armies and weapons of war and mass destruction and technologies and everything they know that the last show is coming the greatest show on earth is coming all right and this is what this is what the this is what the Spirit, that's just that's in me. Okay, it's gone fine. It's a bad spirit. It's a bad spirit that was just hovering behind me. So this is what the scripture says about Edom, right? This is what the Zonovan's 
Bible dictionary. We're going to read out of here again, right? The Zonovan's Bible dictionary, right? Zonovan's Bible dictionary. So this is what it says about Edom, right? And this is what the elites and super elites are preparing for because they know this judgment, this almighty judgment that we speak of day in and day out, week in and week out, is on its way. And they can see the prophecies unfolding in front of their face. And no matter what they try to do to disturb the prophecies, to turn it, to do, the most side is going to put the spirit on the right Edomites, right, of the right secret societies and of the right governments and of the right bankers and all the rest of it for them to fulfill his prophecy. It's as simple as that. No matter what they try and do. So this is what the scripture says about Edom. And this is what your, your average Edomite does not understand or know, right? It says Edom right, figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene right, of great future judgments. And we're about to come into those judgments. Edom is America. E America is spiritually known as Edom. It's also spiritually known as um, Babylon, Egypt, Sodom the daughters of Babylon, Idumia. Idumia is a Greek word for Edom, all right? Sometimes it's referred to as Assyria in the Bible, America, all right? Mainly in the Apocrypha. But Edom figures prominently, prominently, which is America, all right? Which is controlled by the Edomites, all right? In the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from the Most High. So the Most High said, you Edomites, there is not a chance in hell, right? For lack of a better word, that you can receive any kind of forgiveness for your crimes. Because you are the main perpetrator of the wickedness that scattered across four corners of the world. You are the, you, you, you're the, the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're like the, the out. You're like the, the one that's pushing all of this wickedness all comes from you Edomites. Why? Because you are the wicked that the Bible speaks of. So we're just going to read two scriptures referring to the prophecies of this future judgment of Edom. Then we're going to close the session, all right? So first we're going to go to... First we're going to go to... Isaiah. Isaiah... 34. First, we go to Isaiah 34. I'm just going to go straight to the point. It says, for Isaiah 34, verse 5, it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Right? Whose sword? Yahweh Shai's sword. Right? Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Idumia is the Greek word for Edom. Right? And upon the people of my curse. To judgment. So, who are the people of the Lord's curse? All right? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. So, you find that answer simply in the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. It says, Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Whereas Edom says, We are impoverished, but we will return because they were impoverished. They were living in the Caucasus Mountains. All right? That's why they called themselves Caucasians. Right? They were, living in the, they were living in the clefts of the rocks, in the holes of the mountains. It says, whereas Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. That's what they've done. They built their desolate places. They went around the world and built their skyscrapers, their cities, their kingdoms, you know, they, 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 they everywhere. Their democracy, their whole s system of world politics is instilled everywhere, right? The, the global world trading is all controlled by these Edomites. He says, Thus says the Lord, it says, it says, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Yahweh. They shall build, which is what they've done. Building behind me. It's one of Esau's great buildings, right? Right behind me, right? They shall build, the Lord says, which is what they've done. All the cities around the world, from New York to Sydney to London to Paris to, to um, Berlin, Hamburg, you know, San Francisco. Chicago, Boston, Los Angeles, you know, all over California, everywhere they've gone, from South America, Toronto, they've gone and built their cities everywhere. 
from New Zealand, everywhere this, these Edomites have gone. But this is what the prophecy says. They shall build, but I, Yahweh, the Most High, will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Because everywhere they've gone, it's pure wickedness they've used to build, to rob, steal, thief, create, right? The border of, and if it, it says, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people, which are the Edomite, that's why they got to be here in the last days. The people against whom the Lord, Yahweh, has what? Has indignation forever. So indignation means what? Righteous anger forever. So these are the people of the Lord's curse, the Edomites, just so you understand. They have to be here today to receive these prophetic, that because they are prominently figured in the prophetic scriptures as the seed of a great future judgment, which means they have to be here today. And Malachi 1 and 4 shows you that. Isaiah 34, go back to Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord, Yahweh, is what? Is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of the lambs and of the goats and of the fat of the kidneys of the rams. And the Lord, Yahweh, has a sacrifice in where? In Bozrah, right? which represents Edom today, because Bozrah was the capital of ancient Edom. So he has a sacrifice in Bozrah, talking about America, right? And a great slaughter, listen carefully, in the land of Idumia. A great slaughter in the land of Idumia, America. This is why we tell you about America is gonna be destroyed, sorry, destroyed by nuclear fire and by the chariots of the Lord. It's because it's prophesied in the Bible that it must take place. And then the last scripture we're gonna give you today, Ooh. It's Isaiah 63 verse 1 Listen carefully It says here we Read probably 3 or 4 verses It says who is this so Isaiah 63 verse 1 Who is this that comes from Edom With dyed garments from where From Bozra Which represents America right? America's stronghold right? This that is glorious in his apparel Right, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to say. So, who is that coming from? Us, coming from Edom, which is America, with his dyed garments, which is metaphoric for the amount of blood that's going to be shed. That's Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It's going to be him coming from America. Because remember, and I've always said this to you, it's Yahweh Shai that's going to, and the angels with their chariots, what the world calls UFOs and UAPs that are going to complete the final destruction of the United States of America. They are going to complete that. The chariots of the Lord and, and the tens of thousands of angels. You see, the Russians are going to begin the destruction of America with their allies using nuclear weapons. The Russians, you know, the Chinese, the Iranians, they're going to begin that destruction. But it's the Lord himself, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's going to destroy America. Right? With the angels in their chariots, what the world ignorantly calls UFOs or UAPs. Alright? Unidentified aerial phenomena or unidentified unidentified flying objects. Alright? So it's what it says here, Isaiah 63 verse 1. Who is this that comes from Edom? That's Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Alright? He's coming from Edom, from America. That's their military stronghold. Alright? with dyed garments from Bozra. Dyed garments represents the amount of bloodshed that's going to be shed in this destruction. Because remember, America is going to be totally destroyed. That is the, that is the Edomite stronghold, right? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness. There's only one that speaks in total, utter righteousness, right? Without anything else. I see how I and the father. <laughs> Right, because it, because the Irish says there's only one good. He said that's my father. Right, mighty to save, because he's coming to save the Israelites, the true children of Israel, those of us that descend from the transatlantic slave trade, those of you that descend from the Native American Indian tribes of North South America and Canada today, who they call Latinos, Hispanics, Mexicans, or Puerto Ricans. That's who the Lord's coming to save. 
and only the elect, the elect, the chosen, one third of our people, which includes the 144,000 and the mixed multitude. If you ever see these Edomites walking up and down this plane, right? The sun is burning these Edomites like hell. They're all turning red. It's a pity I couldn't switch the camera around. It doesn't allow me to do a switch around to the other side, but they're all burning red. They're trying to put sun down on themselves to protect themselves, but they're just, they're getting even more redder because that's who they are. Edom means red. They're showing themselves on a day like this because they haven't, they haven't seen the sun for so long in England, right? They come out here in droves and all they do, they just burn and turn red. And they need the suntan lotion to try to protect them, try to make them brown. Because that red that they have already gets even redder. I might even do a little clip of them later on and show you. So it says there, Isaiah 63 verse... Two, it says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? That red represents the amount of blood that's going to shed on the day of judgment. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel and thy garments like him that treadest in the wine fat? This is a metaphorically. That's how the destruction is going to go down. That's how the Lord's going to defeat them. It's going to be like treading wine, grapes in wine fat. That's what it's going to be like. There's going to be no mercy when the Lord comes. None. Zero. Right? What they have been told in their churches is contra contradictory to the Bible. It's not what the scripture says. The scripture says the Lord is coming to shed blood, word. He's coming to take down nations. All right? The churches are telling you about this blonde hair, blue eyed devil that doesn't exist. All right? He only exists in the mind of these people coming from the Renaissance period. All right? This man that's coming from the heavens is coming to shed blood, to take down nations. And the main enemy are the Edomites. It says, Where are it says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Metaphorically talking about the destruction that's coming on Edom, which is America. I have trodden the wine press alone, and the and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my remnant. So that's metaphorically. Blood ain't gonna actually sprinkle on the Lord's garments, but he's just showing you the amount of blood. It's like the, the um, you know, like when someone's going into war, sword, you know, sword, sword and shield battle and the amount of blood that shed, it's metaphorically it took, it's gonna be like that. The blood ain't gonna literally shed on the Lord's garment, but the amount of blood that's gonna shed, is gonna be like you was in an old fashioned war with swords and shields, and it's just blood splurting everywhere. So it says, for the day of vengeance, listen carefully, is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And who is he coming to redeem? The children of Israel. And remember, one more in Isaiah to finish on, right? <laughs> I might do another video later, boy. Lord willing. Right? It says here, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. It says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. Right? So that's what the Lord is referring to, right? Metaphorically. The battles where you have confused warriors and noise and garments rolled in blood, that's shield and sword. But listen carefully. But this battle that's coming the scripture says but this one but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire so this last battle of battles world war three the war of armageddon the come of the lord is going to be with burning and fuel of fire i say again isaiah chapter 9 verse 5 for every battle of a warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire and what's he talking about this last battle that's coming the war of armageddon and that burning and fueled fire is going to come from the nuclear weapons that are going to be used in this war and when the chariots of the lord comes and the lord's chariots are going to possess hydro nuclear power some sort of you know powers that we've never seen weapons that we've never seen alongside the weapons that we know about today so anyway oh, First, dear boy, I pray this that was an edifying lesson for all of the Akiyams and Akwas out there, for the brothers and sisters out there. I pray this was an edifying edification for you today, talking about Esau, a little bit of history about Esau, 
who he was then and who he is today and who the Lord is coming to deal with as his number one enemy in these last days in this war. I pray this was an edifying lesson for all of the brothers and sisters to the Akiyams and Akawas and to the hopefully elect. Until we meet again, Lord willing, we we'll give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Haushai, Bashim, Rakar Kadash, Shalawam, 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 brothers and sisters, all praises. We might even get another video done later again today. All right, Lord willing, the spirit's on me. All praises, family.